We'll take three breaths up. Good morning. Good morning from the desert. And two, inhale. And exhale. Now we'll take those hands down, drop a shoulder. And inhale, and exhale, drop a shoulder. Good, and inhale, and drop. And you're just gonna see how's that body. You're linking breath with movement, which helps your parasympathetic system start to get in gear to rejuvenate that body. Now we're gonna do flexion extension. So you're a cat and inhale and exhale round and inhale and exhale good keep going inhale i just have to make sure that this is muted inhale and exhale okay all right we're gonna go all the way up and once you're up we'll go over inhale and exhale now this is just dynamic stretching so you're not gonna stay here for a long time. Just touch the muscles and go to the other side. Getting the blood flow, going, move, moving the lymph, moving the synovial fluid. Inhale and exhale. Perfect. Now the shoulder circles. Lift up your heels as you lift your arms and draw circles. You're doing great. Two. Just start feeling like the body is warm now. Inhale and exhale now stand with the feet a little bit wider and just sway those arms right and left four three two and one now we're going to grab a dyna band or an elastic tubing and you can take that dyna band so i've been mixing it up so that if you have one you see that you can use different ones and your palms are going to be facing up and we're going to press out Exhale and press out. Beautiful. Exhale, press out. Exhale and out. And press. Good. So you have your Dyna band. You're standing tall. Your knees are soft. Uh huh. And your exhale is pushing out. Now you can check in with your wrist, see if they're fairly flat, but the band's not. Uh, pressing your wrist backwards and extension. All right. Exhale, inhale, and you can control how slowly the band comes back in. You'll feel the back of your arms, the triceps, and take five, and take four, and take three, two, and one. And then take the band, palms towards each other and step on your band with one foot. Now each arm is bending at the elbow. Exhale, exhale, very good. Right and left. Now if you have a Dyna band, I like to hold it like a hammer grip. If you have elastic tubing with the handles that spin in your hands, it's nice to hold the palm up like you're holding a cup of soup. So you're basically gonna keep those wrists pretty safe. And your chest and shoulders are open. You're not letting them slope forward. Okay, six, six, five, five, four, four, Three, three, two, two, one, and one. Perfect. Now shake it out a little bit. Step on that band with the other foot in the middle. Pull up. And you see how your elbows are higher than your wrist. Exhale, up. Exhale up. Now you want to feel the shoulders, the deltoids, and you want to feel the biceps. You want to soften the knees. I know even for me, sometimes I'll stand and my knees will lock backwards. So you're going to barely soften them. Elbows higher. Adjust your grip if you need to. Good. All right. Seven. Neck is soft. 
six more, five more, four more, three more, two more, and one more. Now, let that go, shake it out. Also, if you need a sip, grab it. We're gonna put that band behind us. Your other hand's down at your low back. You're gonna push up, bend. You're gonna push up and bend. And exhale, and exhale, and up, and exhale. And seven, good, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Try five more. Now, when you're doing these, knees soft, ribs down a little. And jawline parallel to the floor. You're practicing good posture while you're doing the resistance training. And it gets more normal for your body to stand in that posture when you're doing other tasks where it could be distracted from posture. Now right hand low, left elbow. And your exhale pushes you up. What you can do is scan. Do you have equal weight in your feet, 50-50? Are you accidentally shifting in one leg? So you can just notice these little cues while you're in the class. Exhale. Notice if you have more back arch and just tuck your ribs down a little. Uh huh. Nine. The top wrist will accidentally get extended too much or flexed, so you can try to make it neutral like a piece of plywood in it. Twelve. The shoulders open. Thirteen. Exhale. Fourteen. Fifteen. 16, 17, 18, resist slowly on the way back, 19, 20, and let those shoulders go. We'll take the palms up, elbows by your side. Open up. One, two, three, four. Five, six, and challenge yourself to go a millimeter more than you thought you could. Challenge yourself to find symmetry in the arms, right and left, removing the same. Sometimes I have to tell my right to go a little bit more. I think it's just a tiny bit tighter because of the uh, pendants on it. It's the dominant arm. So just see what you're noticing. 13, 14, 15, we have five more, so we can do five more. 16, 17, 18, 19, good team, and 20. Now flip your hands over, and you're gonna take your hands up. Your exhale is gonna pull down the band right in front of your face and wide. Your exhale pulls down. If you don't have enough tension, grab more band, exhale. Exhale, good. Your wrist, you can scan them individually and then see are they pretty neutral. They're not gonna be 100%, but you're making sure they're not wildly bent backwards or forwards, right? Uh, and the exhale, you pull down. You have no neck tension. You can release tension anytime. Five, four, we're gonna have a little bonus on this. Three, two, now stay low. And 10, nine, eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Relax your shoulders and then take that band with one hand and one foot on the same side. So if I have a uh, right hand, it's my right foot. If you have your right hand, it's your right foot. Now, this is gonna be kind of sideways. The first one may not be perfectly measured. It's okay. Just do what you can. Your shoulders are level, three, Four, you're making sure not to lean. Five, six, seven, eight, 
10. So go for five more here if you can. 11, if you're tired, just rest. 12, but you're going to that fatiguing. 13, in the final repetition, feeling. 14, and 15. Now we're gonna go to the other foot and the other hand. Very good, this is shoulders. Step on that band, press up. Now I stepped, I didn't, uh, I made it a little tight, so all you do is just adjust. We're going to about shoulder height. Four, and we're doing that without leaning the body. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, one more, 15, good. Now other foot, other hand. We're gonna do frontal raise here. Take your foot, go forward, good. One, two, very good. Three, and if you need more slack, do that. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, other side. Okay, foot on the band. Here we go, pull forward. One, two, there you go, Jean. Three, knee soft. Four, long elbow. Five, but it has just a little softness. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Perfect. Now step on that band again, both feet right in the middle. If it's too hard, just go back to one foot. But what we'll do is take 10 bicep curls, bend your elbows at the same time, resist. Exhale, bend, resist. Exhale, bend, resist. Bend, yep, yes. The band is in both hands, right, Jean? Yeah, five. Six. And you can go higher than a free weight on this. Seven, and still have tension. Eight, nine, and ten. Gorgeous. Now this is a shoulder stretch. I am going to move you up because I want you to see this one. Take your hands a little bit wide like a Y. Now go uh, behind you and find a stretch. If you don't have enough tension, just walk your hands closer together. Now your wrists are gonna be straight. Be careful, because they'll be tempted to do this thing. So you're gonna keep some wrist tone. Five, four, three, two. Lower that hand. Now we're gonna do it again. Up and back. Five, four, Three, two, and down. One more time. Five, four, three, two, inhale. Now this is mobility dynamic, so probably walk it out further. Now watch this, see how you just do the motion back and forth. If you have to wiggle to do it, then you probably want your arms wider. But you do want to feel some stretch. Oh my gosh, it feels so good. Okay. Five. Four. Three. It's starting to feel better, isn't it? Two. So now I'll find one more place. Anywhere. Five. Oh my God, it feels so good. Four. Three, 
two, and one. Now let that go. I'm going to meet us on the floor, but keep your band handy and grab your, your uh, core uh, foam roller. And okay, grab your band, grab your coffee as well. Take a sip if you need. You're going to take your band around your feet. I like to have it where my uh, heel meets my arch. Cross the band. Now it's an X. Walk your hands further up. Now if you have two bands, you can also do this with two bands. So I'm going to show you with one band. If you have two bands, because the back is such a strong area, and you can take two. If you do not have two bands, don't worry. Just do the one band and choke up on it or do more reps. Do it till you feel a fatiguing sensation. We're um, stressing the muscles so that they uh, break down and build up stronger. We're stressing the bone. Uh, Wilt's Law, you stress the bone so it rebuilds stronger for uh, stronger bones. Prevention of osteopenia, osteoporosis, or help with, at uh, minimum, ameliorating the further de deterioration of the bones. So you want to feel a little stress. It's in the right places. It's in the bicep. It's in the rear shoulder. It's in the lats. It's in the grip even. We need some grip strength. You know this if you've tried to open jars or bags. So we need some grip strength. Now, um, your exhale is pulling. Your inhale is returning. Your exhale is pulling. Your inhale is returning. Now, you can stay upright and rotate while you pull. Now, exhale, rotate while you pull. Careful that you don't sink into your side that you're rotating. It's a clean rotation. Your ribs are in the same parallel to the floor position as you rotate. Now, if you only have one band, one trick you can do is hold on to, uh, you can hold on and do like five on one side and five on the other. So otherwise, I'm gonna keep us turning, keep going and do 10 more. So we'll do 10, nine, and the palm is up, eight, seven, six, very good, upright, five, four, yep, and your elbow can go past your body a little bit more, Betty, I think, three, two, and one, perfect. Now, to give the body a break, just take your feet together, inhale, exhale, forward and then just shake it out. Just let it go, shake out any tension. Your elbows can even help out your inner thigh stretch. Exhale, relax. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, Four, three, two, and one. We're going to come back up, take that band around your feet again, right around where the heel meets the arch. And you're going to lean back. Use your abs though, so I've got a scoop. But I've got this, uh, like an ice cream scoop, put down my belly. And bend your legs. Now if you want harder, you lift your humerus, your upper arm. Or you lean back a little. Now every time you exhale, bend your elbows. Every time you exhale, pull your belly in. Now even if you lift your upper, your upper arm, you're not lifting your shoulder blades. All right, then return with control. So if you want it easy, put your elbows down low. If you want it a little harder, lift up your arm. So harder, easier. All right, five more, four more, three more, two more, one more. Use your abs, come up, flip your hands for most of us, depending on if you have a band or a tube, and you're gonna take 
tall stance. Pull your arms, and now I'm going to be moving just so you can see me at different angles. You don't have to move. But you can see how I'm pulling the band like a Y. You're upright. Pull. 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 Good. Exhale. Pull. Lift up tall. If it's too hard to sit up, just sit on your roller or sit on the pillow or sit on the yoga block. Rear deltoids, one of my favorite. They need so much more work because they're getting forward overstretched with our daily tasks. So it's going to help with preventing rounded shoulders or bringing the rounded shoulders back into a beautiful upright shoulder position. Four, three, and this um, functionally helping the shoulder joint. Two, one. Perfect. Now let your legs go out like a bigger V. Take an inhale. It's going to feel great. And exhale, go down. Now you can just relax your neck and your shoulders. Shake out any tension. Enjoy. The inner thighs are stretching. And 10. Good. Love it, letting go. You can even let out some sides, releasing tension, yawn if you can. That's a great way to bring regulation. And five. Four. Two, take another inhale, and then on your exhale, come on back up, bring those legs together again, use that band, around your heel, arch, cross it like an X, grab your handle ends, put your elbows by your side, now we did these standing, and it's a little, uh, it's a nicer vector this way. So you're opening up. Now I'm doing a uh, palm up position, wrist flat. You could do it this way too. See what works for you. Sometimes just the way the handle is on the band or the elastic tubing can help you feel like you're not fighting the band. You're just going with it. So see what works for you. Shoulders are open. You notice how they're not rounding forward and the shoulders are down away from the back. All right. And good. Five, four, three, two, one. And now uncross them. Take a hand in each. Now, this is almost like an X. So one arm's up and one arm's down a bit. Now switch. One arm's down, one arm's up a bit. Good. Exhale. Very good. That diagonal pattern that we do a lot in Pilates and yoga. Kind of like how we work our abdominals with the crisscross on the yogic bicycle. This is working the posterior oblique chain, which is what we use when we bike, when we walk, when you walk, and that's where um, if there's problems with the gait, you can come into back pain. So you want to feel like both arms are equally pulling. Diagonal, this is what you use when you swim. When we do our Pilates exercises swimming, it's the opposite diagonal muscles. Four. That's how we ambulate. Three, two, and one. Now open up both. They're about the size of a lower than your shoulder, but go back 10 times. So a little uh, parallel, if you almost parallel, but not quite. Now it's going to be hard. Wrists are flat. Five, hang in there. Four, three, two, and one. Perfect. All right, let's get rid of that for a moment. And we're going to take, uh, keep your uh, keep your roller near. We're going to take 20 seconds to roll down. I'm also going to grab my drink, so if you need to grab yours, please do. But you're going to take 20 seconds to roll down. Flexion. 
<clears throat> is how the abdominals fire. All right. You're also making sure your space is good. I see your space, everybody looks good. Five, four, three, two. Take a full body stretch. Take an inhale. And on your exhale, one set of bridges uh, for the booty and the back. Now, your feet are gonna be on that roller if you can. If you don't have one, just do this on the floor. Otherwise, go up and down. This is a really nice back strengthener and glute strengthener, which is important for the back. This is gonna complement all the abdominals that we're getting ready to do with our foam roller. You wanna feel, if you're not sure, put your hands on the booty. You wanna feel your booty. It is harder if you have your toes reaching towards the floor more and don't just dig your heels, but kind of push your toes towards the full of the foam roller. Curl up and down. Curl up and down. All right, four. Good, all that beautiful strength throughout your back and you feel articulation and strength. So we're helping with mobility and strength. This is so nice for the back too. Now stay up, we're gonna enjoy the lifted. Now, if you want some different, more challenge, push that roller away from you, back and forth. That's gonna fire up some hamstrings. If that's too much, then don't do it. But if you want it bigger, roll through the whole foot. It is a big one, it's harder than it looks. Five, four, toes reach down if you want it harder. Three, two. Now inhale, on the exhale, lower down and hamstring stretch, hands to your feet. Pull the knees down. We're gonna do more than one stretch. Lower that leg just above the roller and lift up your right leg. Your hand is in your um, foot. Your left hand's over your leg. Look down and at your toes and hold. 10, nine, eight, seven. We're getting a stretch and we're working the abs. Five, four, three, Two, now lower, take your left foot in your left hand or the best you can, extend the right leg, right hand on that right thigh, lift up. Now use your abs, pull it. You're getting the hamstring stretch and abs. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Inhale and exhale, perfect. Now we're gonna turn over. I just need to move my drinks. I don't wanna get anything over. You as well if you need to. Put the elbows down on the mat. Put the shins on the foam roller. Come back here, foam roller. If you don't have a foam roller, put your feet on the floor. This is a really effective abdominal. So first do plank and hold. Now your elbows are strong so that your shoulder blades are flat. Hold 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, lower somehow, just rest. You can do abbreviated child's pose. The next one, I'm gonna move the roller up closer to my shins, um, closer to under my two inches below my knees. Turn the toes towards each other. Bend your knees underneath your body. Put them back into plank. Bend your knees underneath your body. Put them black. The toes, keep going. The toes towards each other cue helps you roll out the shins at the same time. And bend, and bend, five, six, seven, eight, nine. These are effective. Ten. Now recover any way you need to. We're going to do one that's called the pike or the hip lift. Um, you're like a dolphin in this one too, in yoga. Your elbows are down on the mat. You're gonna put your legs out. Now lift up the hips, but you see how the knees are long this time? They're not bending. One, keep your knees long. Good, G. Two, there you go. Boy, that works. <laughs> Three. <laughs> Five. Six. Seven. Eight, belly in, nine, 
These are really working, huh? <laughs> oh my goodness, those work. It feels like Friday. It feels like a full week of workouts already when you do this core. <laughs> okay, this is really fun. Obliques. We're going to take our knees and come to the left elbow and then straight back plank and inch. Worm to the right elbow. It's going to be fabulous. You're going to pull your knees in, go plank. Pull your knees in to the other elbow, plank. Knees in, plank. Knees in, plank. And boy, that one works. And good. Just do the best you can. Four, three, two, recover. Rest. Woo. Wow. Okay, this is gonna be the hips up and down with knees long. So you can do this without the roller, lifting hips. But if you have the, uh, but if you have the roller, you can go up to the oblique left and oblique right with your knees long. Now you can do that with the feet on the floor too, but it looks like this. It's an oblique pike and up. And exhale up. And exhale up. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Rest. Isn't that something? Now this next one is going to be four points at light. We're going to pull our knees in, then pivot left, center, pivot right, center. Do the best you can. Any kind of plank is going to be good if you don't have a roller. So you can start roller. You can bend your knees in, rotate center, rotate, center, go back. Pull your knees in, rotate right, center, rotate left, go back, pull your knees in, rotate left, center, rotate right, center, and one more. In, rotate right, left, and go back to plank. Now, take that roller and put it in the front of your back. If you don't have a roller, it's okay, we're gonna use the floor. But this is gonna feel so good after all the abs we did. It's gonna stretch out those abs that we just worked. Hands go wide, arms go wide. Belly in, lift up, and lower. Okay. And up, I have my ponytails doing its own thing. Hold on, I don't know what's going on. Inhale, lift, and lower. And go up. And inhale. And up. Good job, guys. Doesn't this feel so good? I feel like we could just do a hundred more of these. So we're going to go up. Four. Three. Two, hold it up, 10, nine, eight, seven, good, six, five, four, three, two, and lower. Now, if you need a child's pose, you can take one. Uh, if you have been working on with these endurance extensions, you're probably okay just to bend the knees and rock them. Okay, let's go back, arms on. Now this is building triceps and lat strength too. Lift up, touch the hamstring if you want to add on. Bring that hand back, touch the hamstring if you want to add on. Touch the hamstring, touch the hamstring, touch the hamstring, touch the hamstring. Four more, four, three, two, both arms on, lift up. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Exhale, lower. Good. All right, we're going to take a type of child pose or a type of rest pose. Just rest any way that you're craving. It could be a little child's pose. Pretend like I'm pressing on your back, just pushing on your little back. 5, 4, 3, Two, inhale, and exhale. All right, this is gonna be a set of push-ups. 
and I'll show you a few ways to do it. Here's a cube. So if push-ups feel intimidating, this is a great way just to get the essence, the shoulder blades down and back, the fundamental cues, the belly pulls in, your shoulders are down the back. That's the most important cue. Most people I see when they try to run a fast yoga, if they get an injury, it's from dropping those shoulders. No, the second one is knees down. So this is the second one. And this is push up. Good. If you want to do the toes, you can. Even if you hold a plank and you just barely bend your elbows. Another main cue is that the head's going to try to drop, but we're not going to let it. Lift your ribs a little, Betty. Yep, and go back to the cube if you want. I'll, I'll show you knees. Five more. Four more. Good. It feels like a three good plank when you have a good push up. You feel your abs. Two. One. All right. Really good job. Bend those uh, elbows and pat yourself on the back. Five, four, three, two. Inhale and exhale. Now sideways. You're going to grab that shoulder pad on it. If you do not have one, do not worry. And I'm going to double up or triple up the forearms, the mat under the forearm. All right, the legs are going to go out. So you're a little bit more arm biased when you have the roller underneath you. Go up and hold. 10, 9, 8, 7, Six, five, four, three, two. Lower that hip. Let's do the other side. Flip that and do the other side. All right, here we go. Blank. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Lower that hip. Now, this time we're reverse planking. Place your ankles on that. Place your fingers back. And every time I do a reverse plank, Marty, I think of us going to that workshop about 23 years ago in Charlottesville <laughs> doing the reverse plank. <laughs> and a lot of people couldn't do them. So I uh, like that we're still doing them 20, so 20 years later or something like that. All right, hold up. Lift up your hips. Now, 10, 9, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, lower down. We are going to offer an option of right leg, left leg pulls. It's totally optional. Stay in your plank. If you need to modify, you can also bend the knees. So go up. Now, if you're adding on, you, you leg pull. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Looking good. Eight. Good job. Nine. Ten. Inhale. And exhale. Lower down. Terrific. Now we're going to take a shoulder stretch. Take your inhale to a turned around. Didn't cue it, but I did. Right arm back. Left arm back. If you don't have a roller, just put your hands on the floor. And hold. Lift up your sternum. Now, the big cue that's so easy to not do here is soften the elbows. Because the arms are behind you and if you're hypermobile, you don't even know sometimes that your joints are backwards, bend the elbows a little bit, lift your heart. Five, four, three, we're adding on. Two, see if you're comfortable. If you can add on, your hands could walk closer towards each other. If someone were right behind you, they could see your hands were in line with your spine. So make sure one arm's not over here. Lift up. Good. Soften your elbows even more, Betty. Yeah, I know. That one's a hard cue. Five. If, if anyone's in doubt, just bend them more than you think. Five. Four. Three. Lift up. Two, like a string is attached to your heart. Elbows soften to make up for that any hyperextension. Inhale. And then exhale. All right, so we got I got good feedback from uh, last week's. So I want you to, I'm going to show a couple things. If you don't have a roller, lift up and just roll out that upper back. 
If you don't have a roller, do bridge because bridge strengthens the back. Yes. Uh huh. There you go. Do bridge up and down if you don't have a roller. Good. And articulate through the spine. If you have a roller, try doing a little bit of a back bend and then rolling out. You might do a, a elbow touch, kind of hit your left scapula and hit your right scapula. So basically you're playing around five, four, three, two, and one. Now, if you have a pillow, if you have a roller, you can go back. Some of you might need a roller, uh, excuse me, a pillow underneath your head or your booty. Nothing should hurt. The neck shouldn't have any big creases in it. If you don't have a roller at all, you can actually just put a pillow underneath your upper back. So I'm going to take a look or you can keep doing bridge. Yes, either one. Good. All right, hold here. Relax your upper back. So you can have a pillow underneath your upper back if you don't have a roller. Relax with your breath. Five. Four. Three. Two. Inhale. And then tuck the chin and come up. Very good, very good. And then we're going to take the uh, booty, lift up. Now, you can either do a hip stretch, lying down figure four, or you can get on that roller and roll out that hip. Okay, good, either one. You can do a hip stretch, or you can do the roller and the hip stretch. All up and down, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, Good. Five, four, three, two, other side, ankle to thigh, and roll out that hip. So nice and one okay now one of two things if you don't have a roller do this stretch and then when we switch sides do this stretch if you do have a roller I'm going to recommend that you take that roller underneath the most favorite place in the whole wide world the lats where they twist and it's at the back of the shoulder armpit area if you find something more, uh, Jean, take that top arm, yeah, and go over it. You may find that you like that stretch too, yeah, but long is gonna be more than that, yeah. Yeah, do what feels good, there you go. 10, there you go. Nine, eight, breathing, seven, six, Five, this is great if you have feelings like your shoulders are rounding forward, or not feelings, but you feel like it is. Two, and we're gonna go to the other side. It also helps with breathing. You either stretch on the other side, good, or roll that out. Good. Back and forth. Back and forth. Roll out. 
Breathe, breathe, breathe. Good. Ten. Finding different areas. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. Up. Oh, just found a good spot. Inhale. And exhale. Now I'm having an intuition that we need to do our IT. So you can get on your sat. Uh, let me do both and then I'll show you. So Jean, if you want to lie down and put your leg in the air and cross the midline with your hamstring stretch, that's going to get a good stretch. So here's the IT. Here's the stretch for your IT. Here's the stretch if you don't have a roller. Lift up that leg and take that leg in the air. Yep, and then use your hand. Yeah, you may use your hand or you may use your, your uh, band, but all this area needs it, right? So if you're doing the roller, you're just uh, rolling from hip towards the knee, but not on the knee. You could deviate forward. You could deviate back. Deviate forward. So good. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, and one. I think we needed that. Let's do the other side. Roll out that IT. Wonderful. I'm in uh, St. George still, just for a little bit longer, but I uh, went into the city for something, and they had a hot yoga, hot Pilates, hot fascia, one of those huge studios that, you know, us being from the country just blew my mind. Beautiful big doors attached to a wonderful smelling coffee house. It was a solely selling Lululemon. So it's funny, they called this class fascia. Beautiful though, and they did it. They did classes in heat, all those Pilates classes, all those flashes in heat, and they did some in normal temperature. And then when you walked in and out of the studio, they had water spraying on you, misty, misty sprays. It was amazing. <laughs> that opened up to my mind to new possibilities. <laughs> all right, five, four, three, two, inhale. And then exhale. Nail. I love that we did that. Okay, we're going to lie down. I'll give you a couple things you can do. One is lie down on this roller. Those of you that uh, follow on social media, these are the stretches I've been putting on recently for uh, prevention of rounded shoulders. But it looks like this. You can also just put a pillow underneath your back and uh, or a towel. Yep, or do bridge. That a girl. All right, hold. Ten. Nine. Good. Eight. If you want to add on, open up your knees like a little bound angle supine. Yeah, everything's just letting go. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Gently roll off. Take your roller sideways and put it underneath your hips. Uh, Jean, you can do a bridge or you can put a pillow underneath your sacrum. If you would like, you can put one leg out and then put the other leg out. Now make sure the roller is close to where your glutes meet your hamstring. And if you want to add one, arms overhead like a T or a Y. Yes. And relax. Make sure it feels good. You might roll that, put that down lower towards your hamstring if you have any low back tension. Otherwise, just stay up. Good. Relaxing your front hips. 
stay attached to your low back, so relaxing these muscles in a passive stretch. It's going to help the back. Be less prone towards overextension. Now let your breath drop into your abdomen. with as little effort as you can, slide the feet on the floor, lift your hips, and roll back down. And right away, you're gonna feel how your back is just so much flatter on the ground. We're gonna use the roller, or if you don't have a roller, just put the feet on the wall. Uh, this is for the decompression of the spine and for the circulation in the body. Now, when you're here, you could put your hands on your belly and let the breath go to the bottom of your abdomen in a diaphragmatic breath. And just sigh out any tension for the next three breaths. Inhale, expand. A beautiful white light is cleaning up all debris inside. And then exhale it out. And if you have the urge to yawn, that's another great tip to more quickly release tension. Inhale, expand the area of your ribs, your back, your be uh, belly with a light, white light, full of all the gorgeous colors of the spectrum. And then exhale, let that go. Sigh that out. So right now, you can Go back to the mesa, go back to the wire mesa behind Zion where it's quiet. And just rest on a rock that's been perfectly warmed for your enjoyment. With a healing sky that increases your natural vitamin D production more than any supplement ever could. It helps with the nitrous oxide for your circulation. Imagine that you're surrounded by a calm, quiet canyon and you notice little dust devils coming up. It's like a little perfectly cylindrical tunnel of debris, of dust, column of dust spiraling up, circling. And on your next exhale, release tension from your body and that dust Devil releases into the canyon, letting it go. Inhale, fresh new air, fresh new light, cleansing the entire body. On your next exhale, release that dust into the canyon and watch it disappear. Any internal dust from your past that's weighing down your body, that's weighing down your mind, you're exhaling it out into the canyon, far away. You don't need it to weigh you down anymore. Inhaling fresh white light. A clean slate, new breath. Exhale any worries about the future that you can't deliberately, intentionally control. You're just going to control you right now, which is the breath. You're going to let yourself feel that calm, good feeling that you deserve to reset. Release any of the internal debris into the canyon. And then just notice what colors you see all around you. Blue skies, white clouds, cactus with yellow tulip flowers on the top, cactus with pink tulip flowers on the top. Notice what noises you hear. Barn swallow, wind hitting the junipers, shaking the leaves. Little lizards running across. And the other day we saw a white lizard, which is a aberrant mutation from the lizards that have lived in the white sands and it had learned to adapt. 
And they're starting to come out a little bit more beyond the boundaries and perimeters of the white sands. There's a mutation that made them white where they're better able to protect themselves. And you can do that too within your own acute life. Just notice if there's any old patterns that really don't serve you anymore, any old memories that you tell, any stories that you tell that don't serve you anymore. And just let them go into the king. And you graciously mutate into a new story, a new pattern that serves you better, just like the white lizard. So take a moment to notice how that feels, to have that little bit of control over something in your life. Begin to awaken the fingers and the toes and take your time to come up towards a seated position. Let your hands come to your heart and then the other. And then if you had an image or impression of some story or some coping mechanism that served you at one time but that no longer really serves you anymore, and it just weighs you down, or maybe it's an old criticism or an old judgment, just let it go. Let yourself beneficially mutate like that little desert lizard. Give yourself that permission to feel joy. Whenever you're ready, let your eyes open and come back into the room. Thank you so much for joining me. May you feel wonderful today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye guys, thank you so much.